So I'm Ilya. Sorry, first timer. I might get awkward. And um, I'm here to tell you about algorithms. So just a disclaimer: I'm not a very big genius. I'm not going to tell you how to solve a certain algorithm. I'm just going to let you know why I find them fun and what's been my experience with it. So a little bit about me. I'm a software developer. I work uh, with Python. I'm a Python fangirl. Um, I'm trying to make my switch to full stack. I work in London, so basic. I think that's why I say sorry so often. I have <laughs> a casual relationship with mathematics, meaning that I really love it, but I'm not very committed to it. And I am a daydreamer which means that I need to be very passionate about the things that I'm doing. So let me tell you a little story about myself. I was born on a Thursday. No, I'm kidding. The year is uh, 2014, and I was just starting my second university. Um, I was coming from a background of biology and physics and humanities, so I did not know a lot of stuff about computer science. So I just entered whatever group I could find, and here I am in an algorithmic support group. Yeah. And <laughs> um, it just piqued my interest, uh, mostly because it was about math, but also because it had statements like this. You are a king, and you have 100 barrels of wine, and wine is poisonous. How do you find which one is the poisoned one? Well, cool, I'm in a detective show. So um, I continue with it. I started entering contests. My first one were not good. This is one of my first contests on code forces. Can you see that drop? Basically, everyone starts at uh, 1400. And then you just go low if you're not very good at it. Um, but I really, really liked it. And I found people who were also passionate about it. I did notice something. Uh, whenever I asked my work colleagues to join me, they would say, um, what do you want me to join you for? Well, you see, it's an algorithmic contest. Oh, algorithmics. Do you mean bubble sort? <laughs> so I just realized that uh, also while looking at the websites that I was following, that most of the audience were either students or people trying to get a job. And the adults, I mean past students, uh, the ones who already got the job, did not pursue it. And I could understand them. I mean, I'm an avid reader, but if I have a book assignment, I might probably not get that book. So I find algorithms fun. And I'm not going to tell you why I find them fun, because whatever floats my boat might not float your boat. But I am going to tell you how I found them useful and how it, I think, changed the way I write code. So the why. Uh, first of all, they're really good mental exercise. You need to keep that skill sharp. And you could do that by learning a new language. Or you can solve a problem. It, <laughs> it's um, very, very interesting. Also, while studying uh, for a problem, like for example, I really, really don't understand dynamic programming yet. And you start to read about that thing. And you increase your knowledge base, and you become better and better at what you do. Also, I. <laughs> As I said, I am a Python lover, so I sort of refuse to write algorithms in C, even though they are so much faster. So um, basically, this made me become a little more creative when writing code, because in order to get uh, a Python, uh, an algorithm to work in Python really, really fast, you have to be creative about how you write that certain piece of code. Also, it breaks routine because every day we write uh, webs websites or, uh, I don't know, functionalities. Uh, we connect to databases. We do stuff that is important for the people out there, but 
we sort of do it every day. And the most interesting thing we might come across is getting a new job and learning that new project. But doing algorithms from time to time just breaks that routine and um, makes you realize why you fell in love with programming in the first place. Also, it helps you Sorry, it helps you understand logic better and um, it helps you see how certain things were implemented. I mean, I'm perfectly uh, honest about the fact that not all of us need to um, know the stuff that the big guys out there who invented uh, Google or machine learning need to know. But at the same time, it's really nice to know how something, so how a library that you're using, for example, when we're doing sorting, we're not actually writing the sorting algorithms ourselves. We just use dot sort. It's fun, but um, it's nice to see how it's implemented and why it's slow or fast. Let me give you an example. So let's say that one operation is done in one microsecond. And you have something that takes n iterations, and that n is on 100. If you do it in logarithmic time, or uh, linear time, or even uh, square time, it's still less than a second, so it's pretty great. But look at what happens when you do it at n to the power of 6. It's 3 minutes. Oh, 3 minutes, I can go make a coffee in that time. But what happens if you do it in 2 to the power of n or to n factorial? I like, ain't got anybody time for that. My bones will not be <laughs> exist by that time. And um, also, it helps you improve the way you write code. I'm going to give you two examples. For, uh, ex one of them is this thing, the dreaded time time limit exceeded in, on code forces. It usually happens either because I'm using too many iterations or because I'm very stubborn with using Python. So in order to get past that, I'm going to have to look a bit uh, at how I'm visualizing and solving the problem. Am I using too many sorts? Because those count. Am I using some sort of uh, inner library that I don't know how it works because that one counts? Am I using, uh, am I accessing something in a list or am I accessing something in a dictionary? Because those things count. It helps you see these things. And also, it helped me write much prettier code. This is a really, really bad threesome that is still not working and I have no idea why. Because <laughs> I, can't, I can't even remember what I wanted to do here. Those Ys and Vs and Nums and D, I, D, I know it stands for dictionary, but everything else, like, my god. <laughs> so um, since then, I've managed to solve this problem, but I can't fix this one implementation. Also, um, it helps you see patterns. You read a problem, and in the back of your head, you feel like, oh, this sounds like binary search. I've done binary search. Or, um, I don't know, at one time when I was solving many, many, many problems, I realized that, that I, I've, I managed to actually find the best solution for the best kind of problem almost instantly based just on the fact that I was having exposure to it. So, oh, and one more thing, almost forgot about this one. <laughs> We can think of learning algorithms as a social duty. When we say algorithm, we as programmers and computer scientists, we think about maths, steps, input goes to output. But when the general public thinks of algorithms, they think about um, recommendation algorithms. They think about how that time Facebook influenced elections or um, how they are matching you on Tinder with strangers. I don't know, but the basic thing is that in the recent years, like since 2017 onwards, there is starting to be a pretty much lack of trust towards algorithms. And this lack of trust is based on a lack of understanding. I read a 
really funny story the other day while preparing for this talk. There is a guy who goes to the doctor and the doctor is telling him, oh, everything is nice with you. You just have a really rare disease called um, nervous fasciitis, because I'm nervous. And he's saying like, what? Um, and yeah, well, you don't actually really have it, but you have a really high risk for this disease and it's 100% fatal. So you need to take this vaccine in order to help yourself. So y the, the patient must, will probably not go and take the vaccine because he's like, eh, a machine is telling me to do this. But if the doctor would tell him, well, in fact, you have a high risk for the disease because you took blood tests and those blood tests have shown to have a correlation with um, other people who got the disease and because taking other factors into consideration, yada, yada, yada. But because um, the people using the products that are based on algorithms do not understand them. And if we have to, as developers don't understand them, we're just creating this environment where um, it, it, it could lead to a higher distrust in, um, I don't know, technology in the future, and I think it's really, really bad. So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I'm doing it. It's not the best way. Um, it's just a scheme and a suggestion. So you start by finding your sources. These sources could be anything. You could think about, do you want to study or do you want to practice? Do you want to have a community? Do you have, want to uh, have someone teach you or do you want to do it on your own? And based on that, you find those sources. Usually, I use these websites. My first favorite are the first three. The first one mainly because I started with it. Hackerang has a really, really cool interface. LitCode is uh, trying to focus on helping you get through the interviews, but they have really cool paths. And the last one, the daily coding problem, sends you a problem each day for you to solve, and it helps you get consistent. And, um, oh, I have something nice to say about the Sphere Online Judge. They don't show you the test, so you don't know why you got them wrong. And that help, makes you think about what you need to do. Also, do you remember these books? <laughs> because I do remember them from university days. The second one used to give me nightmares at some point. Um, the first one is actually very nicely explained, but it gets tedious after a while because no, you read the title, it's creating the coding interview. It's not saying anything for you as a hobbyist. But if you pair the two together, and there are many, 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 many books out there that could help you study. Then you go to the next level. Upsolving is a concept that I've been introduced to by my partner in crimes in algorithmics. It basically means solving your way up and it goes in one or two directions. First is the point system. This is a website where, um, which takes problems from a couple of other websites, such as Cold Forces, and puts them into lists. And it has this concept of a ladder. Um, basically, um, as you see, they are based on ratings. And in each step of the ladder, there are 100 problems. Some of those problems might, um, might repeat themselves, but basically if you just take them one at a time and if you encounter a duplicate, you try to redo it because the second time you might have a better idea, um, you should find it easier to nail those contests. Also, uh, most of the websites have a difficulty system. Code Force is now introduced a system based on points but all the others have uh, put them into categories like easy, medium, and hard. Um, yeah, I think I might be rushing a bit along with my presentation. Sorry. Um, and um, so, yeah, that's it. Next is the topic system. Um, all the websites are trying to add tags to their problems, so you know that you're solving something concerning arrays or greedy or 
dynamic programming. Uh, basically, in this approach, what you do is you take all the problems that are about arrays and you try to solve all of them. Um, the advantage of this is that you get a more um, focused approach. Uh, the disadvantage of the first one is that you might rush through them and you might get under the impression that you're doing it right because you're going up the ladder, but actually uh, you're just repeating a pattern because you've seen those problems and you got used to them. And then you take a longer break as it happens, like three months or more, then you come back to it and you realize you didn't really understand them as well. Whereas this approach helps you get into the middle of the problem and sort of, I don't know, become an array guru. Um, most of the websites also have paths, like top problems about arrays or something like that. And that, then it's really important that you keep track of your progress. This is something each might just personalize it. Uh, at some point, I was trying to keep the numbers of problems that I was solving. Also, to take a look at the ratings that I was having. Um, the ratings are a bit bad because you might have bad days or you might be a nervous person, just as I am. And um, if I have a time ticking near me saying you have one and a half hours to solve all these problems, I will do badly. And I will have a bad score, I will get discouraged and I will not continue. So sometimes ratings are not very telling because I might be able to solve those, I don't know, C or D problems. That means medium or higher. Uh, if I were in a more calmer environment, but it's still something. Um, also, the number of problems is not really telling a lot, but it's telling you something. At some point, I was having a race uh, with the sad partner in crimes about which one of us solved the most problems. And uh, we just realized after a while that we just tried to outdo the other instead of focusing on the problems themselves, which is not really particularly good. But the point is you need a metric. So whatever you choose, choose something that suits you. For me, um, racing someone or competing with someone is good, but taking part in competitions is stressful. So I don't take ratings into consideration. Then don't forget to compete. I am a really bad gamer. Um, I mostly play just for the fun. So I do the same with um, competitive programming. I don't really aim to be the best, but I just aim to have the fun in it. And this is what kept my algorithmic love in check over the time. There are many, many, many uh, competitions out there. Um, Code Forces, Hacker Rank, and the others have um, weekly or monthly competitions. But what I love the most are these ones, the ones that happen once, maybe twice a year. My favorite one is the hash code. Um, the Google hash code have many MP complete, uh, well, have only MP complete problems. And what I really like about it is that they don't have a good answer. You just try to get as many points to, um, serve as many orders or to send uh, a call to as many services as possible or whatever the statement of to that year is, instead of just having a number of problems and trying to get the right answer, which is fixed, like all the others. But Cold Catalyst had contest a couple of years back about astronomy, and that really, really grinded my Oh, no, grind my gears, I think it's, it's a bad thing. I really loved it <laughs> because, <laughs> because um, I love the subject. And um, so that made me solve the problems more ardently. Um, then it's really important that you gamify everything. Um, I love badges. Uh, not a lot of, not a lot of, a lot of websites have uh, badges added to them. These are from HackerRank. Oh, 
uh, regarding algorithmics, only the first one is important because it re uh, relies to problem solving. Uh, but you could try to make your own game out of it. Like I said, I race. That one is me on a Code Forces contest. Last year, I gained a lot of points. And talking about Schadenfreude, my friend got downgraded. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we come back to finding your sources. Uh, so basically, this whole scheme is not a cycle. It looks something like this, because finding your sources is related to competing, and competing is related to um, gamif gamifying and keeping progress. and absolving, and all of them are tightly coupled together, and um, you can't have one without the other, I think. So um, this is pretty much it. Um, algorithmics is fun. Um, I think we should all try to keep on going with it. Albeit not at a really proficient level. No one asks us to reinvent the wheel. Um, and that's it. I think I rushed a bit. Uh, please ask questions if you have any. Don't ask me to explain algorithms, please. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, how did you start? Um, so, as I said, I went to that uh, university group, but what really kept me going was competing with friends. We would just um, order pizza, and staying late at the office and um, brag about who got the most points, which was actually really, really cool. That's quite inspiring at all. Thank you. Thanks, Julia. Um, you mentioned that one of the advantages of doing this is that you start to see patterns from your experience solving these puzzles and problems, but I wondered if you could give some examples of real life problems that you've been able to solve better or faster, or, or maybe at all, as a result of having exposure to the problems through the, in the problem solving exercises. Well, I don't have much experience with it because what I've been working until now is not very high class, but I do have one instance uh, when a couple of years back at a previous job, I managed to make some requests go a little bit faster just because I was, I was looking at how the code was implemented and um, I was thinking about time complexity and I was like, oh, this is done in O at, of n to the power of three. No wonder it's working like that. So, um, I think seeing the time complexity you are bringing to the product when writing the code is of really, really great help. Yeah, I had a question. Thanks for uh, taking this up. Uh, what do you do when you, uh, you know, uh, fail the fi uh, fifth time or sixth time? Because uh, it is really intimidating. Uh, you have thoughts to give up on the programming. So uh, what do you do then? Well, I do take breaks from time to time, but uh, no. What I realized helped me during those time is just take a step back. Usually I take pen and paper because it, sometimes it works best than just having my laptop in front of me and try to, to solve it as a math problem instead of a computer problem. There is another question as well. What do you do when you face memory out of bounds error? Because I face them a lot. I uh, write the program uh, like it is uh, everything seems correct, and the Ryan 
part, but uh, when it comes to uh, the programming part, uh, it becomes a memory out of bounds error. So what do you do then? I only had that once during a contest, and it was very weird because I've never seen it before. Uh, but I usually try to use the to to try to find the best data structure, such I don't have to keep a lot of uh, different states when solving a problem. So if you choose the right data structure, then you can apply all kinds of uh, operations on it without having to get uh, from a dictionary to a list, to a set, to whatever else. Thank you so much.